actually I have to tell you two things, tech story and also at the same time differentiate between process excellence and operational excellence as I see it. And then I can get to the story, I'm sorry. But the, the process I see is strategy, and I differentiate that from tactics, which is a little, a little, a little bit different. But getting it then to, uh, and one example might be uh, you talk about marketing and sales. Sales is a tactic, selling is a tactic, marketing is a strategy. If you look at any textbook on marketing, you'll see that they, you know, they talk about the four P's, product, price, promotion, and uh, distribution or place. And uh, selling comes under promotion somehow. But Peter Drucker, and uh, who was my main professor, the father of modern management and everything, Peter said that not only is selling and marketing not complementary, but it could be adversarial. And it took, I, I'm sorry for this long story to get to my point, but never mind, you have to understand that part of it. So, in any case, uh, how could it possibly be adversarial? It took me 20 or 30 years to figure that one out, but I figured it out. Though. And that is that you can have a product or a service or anything else, and it can be a, uh, maybe maybe your marketing was off, and so you got you know you got the wrong the wrong product, the wrong marketing, you know, this offer. but you got these great salesmen, and they're doing their doggone us, man, are they they're fighting out, and so they manage to break even slightly and make money. And so you keep thinking, you know, I have more money to that. Well, the selling is the tactics. It's the right tactics. You got great tactical people, but the marketing is wrong. The strategies are wrong. Pro the, the process of excellence is wrong. Operational excellence is excellent. So, uh, what can, what can you? Uh, and, and in fact, even if you did make a little bit of money, you're putting it in the wrong area. In other words, you're emphasizing something that's bad. Whereas if they got the right area, it'd be not only a lot easier to sell, they'd sell a lot more, but they would be actually where it counts and make and everybody could sell all the sales, even the ones that were just marginal. So that's kind of the, the common definition of the difference. Now getting into so what's your what's your greatest impact story? And I, I would say that the one that is very good today would be Uber, which is doing wonderfully in every place in, the, in all in the world. And they are, they're I mean, unbelievable. You think about all the problems they solve with this one thing. The long lines from the airport waiting in taxi lines, where it's cold sometimes in different places, and all that kind of thing. Or waiting for a taxi from home, you know, or maybe from a hotel, and you say, well, will they get here in a hurry? I mean, when are they going to get here? Otherwise, I'll miss my flight. Uber solves all of that, and that's the operational end. So these two, in this case, you have both process actions and operational actions. And my greatest Bex story. Thank you. All I can tell you is technology is changing. Again, getting to my Uber example, that wouldn't have been possible 30 years ago. I mean, I was stunned when I used Uber for the first time, and I could have all my information. I didn't have to worry about how much I took the taxi driver. I didn't have to worry about anything. As a matter of fact, I could track the car as it was coming toward me, and when it got there, I had a picture of it, the driver, and also the license plate in those cases. I mean, you can't beat that. Well, technology is continually changing. The internet has changed everything, really everything, in many, many different ways. So as technology changes, it's going to change the whole landscape. What it's going to do? Well, that's what we as managers and as entrepreneurs and people that are interested in, that's up to us to make those decisions. How we use this technology, Uber did it in a very, very great way. I was abroad for several years. You know, I have a military background. Strangely, I've spent a lot of time in the military. But anyway, any rate, I, I, uh, I, I got back and I, I thought, gee, I've got to know about business. And it, it, in very short order, I found out who Peter Drucker was. And I was working for a company as head of research and development. And at our annual meeting, that's all they talked about was Drucker, and we all had copies of his book, you know, Management Task Responsibilities and Practices. So we had this, we had this great book, and uh, Peter Drucker. About every 10 years, I got the urge to go back to school. Now, don't ask me why. I mean, I, you know, I went to, uh, I graduated from West Point, uh, I flew airplanes, and then about 10 years later, the Air Force sent me and I got an, an MBA. And then 10 years later, here I was out of that military, and again, I, I was interested in getting a doctor. The schools in the Los Angeles area where I live, were met, the big schools were the uh, USC, University of Southern California, and, and, uh, and UCLA. And neither one would let me get in the program. They said, no, this is full time, you can be full time. Uh, there's no such thing as a part-time doctor. Nowadays there is, but in those days there was not. 
So one day I heard about, uh, so I, got, I saw this advertisement in the Wall Street Journal, and it was for our Claremont Graduate School. Never heard of it. And I thought, well, uh, no, that, what they were looking for, you know, a, 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 a PhD that was for practitioners. So at any rate, I called up, they said, well, you've got to be a practicing manager. And I said, well, I think I am. i got a couple hundred people working for me. So, well, okay, that's right. Send your Vita in. I said, what's a Vita? I didn't know what a Vita was. I mean, they said, well, that's a resume. I said, well, why didn't you just say so? So I sent it in. And they said, okay, you qualify. Come out to Claremont, which is about 25 miles from L.A. and uh, from Los Angeles. And so I drove out there. And I was, I, again, I'd never heard of these guys. So, but it looked like a reasonable campus, but I wasn't quite sure because there were a lot of fly by nighters and different Maybe, things. Yeah. So I went and met the dean, yeah. and he was saying, uh, well, you got to be a practicing man. We went over that routine again. He saw my resume. He said, no, that's fine. And he said, of course you'll be taking, we want you to take courses from Peter Drucker. I thought, I don't mean the Peter Drucker. I mean, he's, Claremont is out a little bit in what we call the boondocks. I mean, it's, you know, not in the big city, outside of well, Los Angeles, I put it down. So I was embarrassed to say Peter Drucker, you know, so what I said was, <clears throat> excuse me, Dean, but which Peter Drucker is this? <laughs> and he said, there's only one Peter Drucker, and so there was. So that's how I met him. An incredible guy, very approachable, um, insisted on that we, in fact, wanted us to call him Peter, which we did, um, uh, except that for those that were new that didn't know that we were supposed to do that. And I mean, he really was a, a, a great genius. And I had the very, very, very good fortune to uh, become, develop a friendship with him. And uh, as you know, maybe you don't know, that I've written uh, five of my books. I've been about Drucker, and the last one I wrote was on Peter, Peter Drucker on consulting. And this is not only, it, the consulting issue is a big issue in itself, but this is how Peter, it could have been, the title could have been Peter Drucker on management, you know, the father of modern management, on management, because it's all his techniques that he used and that anyone could use. And so uh, it had a great effect on my life. At the time I had left the Air Force uh, and I was out of the Air Force, I went back in and uh, I was the youngest captain when I was, or excuse me, the youngest major when I was about uh, uh, 26 and the oldest captain when I was 41 and I was recommissioned. And I ultimately became major general, I think largely because of Peter Drucker. So I am a great deal. So. Peter Drucker was a genius. I mean, an absolute genius. He was a very nice guy, he was approachable and everything else, but he was a genius. And the, the things that he, that he wrote, it's just like a, a genius from ancient times, or a genius like Einstein, or a genius like... I mean, this is a person that wrote things that the things, the basics, don't really change. Even Freud, I mean, there's some things that have been attacked, but the basics haven't changed. Yet. And, or that some ancient that was right. And so, his, um, his, his wisdom is, is tremendous. Now, one thing about his wisdom, however, is he, he didn't have time, even though he lived to his mid-90s, he didn't have time to write everything, even though he wrote 39 books. He wrote what to do. He didn't write how to apply this material. And that has been what I've been doing in this other books that I've written about, is how to apply it. Uh, really a, 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 a guy whose wisdom will live forever, and that many, not just I, but other, others have written about him also. Now. So I think probably I, I do more in the application than anything else. I hope it's really important. I don't, think I'm I don't know whether it's failure itself. I mean, let's face it, I would rather be a successful leader than a failure leader, but all of us think repeatedly. And I think failure is important to consider. I think that's a, and, and to go over because when we do things, we tend to focus on our successes. It makes us feel good. Failure does not make us feel good. But we have to have these lessons learned. We have to know these things so that we don't repeat the same mistakes all over again, and also so we can improve our successes. So in that sense, failure is important. Very important. Well, I'll be speaking about how the certain techniques that Drucker recommended for companies that we all can apply. That every single one of us can apply to our organization, no matter what the organization is, 
no matter what it is that we are helping or working with customers or clients or services or, or, or solid you know, thing, it does make any of their products look like their ones. And they're important to attend an event like this because we learn in many different ways. We learn by reading, we learn by seeing, we learn by doing, and we learn by interacting with other people. And so these events are really, really important for that purpose. And I hope everybody will come hear what I have to say.